Chapter 2, Linear Equations in One Variable. We start with Section 2.1, the Addition Property of Equality. And the first objective is identifying a linear equation in one variable. So a linear equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals c. So the big thing about this linear equation is that it only has one type of variable, just a single letter, and that, that variable does not have an exponent. So for example, linear equation could be of the form 2x minus 5 equals 8, or even of the form 3x plus 7 equals 9x minus 4. This is still a linear equation, even though it has an x on both sides, because it's the same letter, x, and it is to the first power, no exponent on the variable. Okay. Things that are not linear equations of one variable may be something like x minus 2 equals y plus 5. Not linear equation in one variable because of the x and the y. Another thing that is not a linear equation in one variable would be x squared minus 4x plus 5. That's not a linear equation in one variable because it's not linear because of the x squared. So the problem in this one, the x squared, and the problem in this one is that there are two different variables, x and y. All right. Moving on, we solve an equation by finding all of its solutions. And the goal in solving a linear equation is to get the variable by itself. By itself. And what that's going to look like when you get it by itself is like x equals 2, because it's solved, you know what x is equal to, or y is equal to, or whatever the letter is. All right. Now, the method for solving a linear equation is one of the most basic laws of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. And we're starting off in the next uh, objective with the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality says that if a is already equal to b, then it's also going to be true that a plus c is going to equal b plus c. If a or b are equal and you add c to both sides, you're still going to have a true statement. That is, what we can add or subtract. Addition and subtraction are the same operation, just with positives and negatives. So we can add or subtract to each side of the equation without changing the solution. That allows us to solve in these two examples right here. So in this first example, if I want to find out what x is equal to in x plus 8, I could subtract 8 from both sides of the equation, giving me x plus 8 minus 8 is 0, so just x equals, and 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So I can get the solution to this equation. The same thing in the next one. This is n minus 7. If I want to get rid of the minus 7, I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, minus 7 plus 7 eliminate, and I have just n. On the left side, I have 11. So n is equal to 11. Let's move on to the next page. A couple more examples right here. We're going to solve using the addition property, so we're going to add the 0.24 to both sides. I'm trying to get x by itself. Since 0.24 is on the side with x, that's what I want to add. So that when I add those, those add to 0. And that's going to leave me with just x on this side equals negative 0.518 plus 0.24. So I've got negative 5.18 plus 0.24, negative 4.94. And in part D, we're going to subtract one-third from both sides. Again, it was an addition, so I'm going to use the opposite of a positive. It's actually the fact that this is positive. Positive one-third, the opposite of positive one-third is minus one-third. To give me x equals, before I can actually figure out what I'm going to have right here, to do that subtraction, I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to draw arrows off to the side and get a common denominator. My common denominator would be 12. And to get the 12, I need to multiply the bottom fraction by 4 on top and bottom. 
and the top fraction by 3 on top and bottom. So negative 3 fourths will turn into negative 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, which will be negative 13 twelfths. So when you're looking at questions that deal with fractions, your answer should be a fraction. In questions that deal with decimals, your answer should be a decimal. So make sure that you do answer in terms of the problem. Answering in a decimal in this situation would not be appropriate since this was a fraction type of problem. So it's important to use our knowledge of least common denominators when we simplify and solve that equation. All right. In the next one, I've got some like terms that I need to combine before I can solve. So let's go ahead and combine the like terms right here. 8y minus 7y is 1y. And 7 minus 10 is negative 3. Equals 6 plus 4 is 10. Rewritten, that's the same as y minus 3 equals 10. So I know that I can add 3 to both sides to solve for y. So I got 13. Okay. In the next one, I've got a little bit more simplification. I've got some distributing to do. Let's go ahead and distribute on this side. This is going to be 4x plus 2. No, no change in that side. There's nothing to combine. Equals 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 6 is 18 plus 8. So we've got 4x plus 2 equals 3x. These like terms right here are going to combine to a negative 10. Now I've got uh, two different things I need to do. These x's are not on the same side. So I'm actually going to start with the x's. And I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So I can get all the x's on one side. So that'll give me 4 minus 3 is 1. I'm just going to write x. I don't need to write the 1 plus 2 equals negative 10. So use the addition property right there. I'm going to use the addition property one more time to get the x completely by itself. Subtract 2 from both sides and we get x equals negative 12. So in this problem I had to do some simplification. I had to use the distributive property and combine like terms. And then we had to use the addition property twice. Once to move the 3x to the same side as the 4x and once to move the negative or to the 2 by, by subtracting 2 to the other side to get the x by itself. Okay. And our third objective, solving applied problems using formulas. So we've got a formula right here. This is the relationship between the number of words in a child's vocabulary and the child's age in months for ages between 15 and 50 months. The relationship can be modeled by this equation. My goal is to use the formula to find the number of words in a child's vocabulary at 24 months. So vocabulary is what I want to find. Vocabulary plus 900 equals 60a, so 60 times 24. Let's go back to my calculator. 60 times 24 is 1,440. So 1,440 is equal to v plus 900. To solve for v, we're going to need to subtract that 900 from both sides. The opposite of v plus 900 is minus 900. So if I subtract 9, oops, 900 from both sides, I get v equals 540. Okay. So the average number of words in a 24 month or two year old child is 540 words. Alright, and that's the end of this section.